Chapter 5 Swelling Ranks The dark woman looked at the planet Sereno with an analytical look and wondered if the Force was having her come here for a reason. It had been several years now that GD Master Tuku had renounced his position in the GD Order and returned to his home to become the Count and ruler of the planet. It was no secret the man had lost faith in the GD Order and thus went his own path where he felt his place had a purpose. She snarled slightly at the idea of a GD leaving the Order. Quite a few had done so in the decades prior to this point in time. They felt the GD Order had lost its place or path in the Force and left to find it so. They could one day return to share their newfound knowledge with the rest of the GD. They were traitors to the GD Order. To the Force. If it were up to her, the Dark Woman would have demanded their lives be ended as payment for such desertion. While she had gone into exile herself, it was by choice, and due to the shame she brought the GD Order by training future GD Killer or a Singh. Hers was a punishment. Theirs were not. Big difference. Still, the Force had led her here. To Sereno. She had been tracking Vader for some time now per the command of the GD Council. Hearing how a Sith Lord had returned and had been the one responsible. For Aura Singh's death had brought the Dark Woman right out of exile. She was tasked with finding, following, and learning everything of value about Darth Vader at a distance when observing the Sith Lord in order to report these findings to the GD Council. So far, she had seen him on Kaili, followed by several other Outer Rim worlds. Namely Dantuine, Yavin 4, Bathawi, and one planet called Honagar. She would have looked into this planet further, but Vader had brought a fleet of Trade Federation warships with him. At first, she thought he was there to invade the planet to claim the resources Bellow, but found some of the ships with Vader were surrounding what appeared to be a science vessel. In addition, only Vader's personal ship had left the science vessel and flew to the surface, while the rest of this droid fleet stayed in orbit. She did not know what Vader did down on the planet, but since nothing evil was done while there for well over a week, she sent a report to the GD Council to investigate the planet and what was down there in case Vader had obtained some ancient Sith knowledge or even resource he could use in the future. After the fleet left, the Dark Woman skillfully pursued them to other locations and worlds long since lost to the GD Order, only to follow the Sith Lord here. She managed to land her ship at the nearest spaceport, and quickly went to the Count's palace to infiltrate it first to see if Vader had turned Dooku. If he had, the Dark Woman would have to report such a devastating blow to the GD Order. Perhaps even use her skills to end Dooku's life. While she did not wish to be an assassin of any kind, the Dark Woman did not wish to leave such a threat left unchecked to be used against the GD Order. It also didn't help that Republic intelligence had determined Count Dooku was the leader of the growing separatist movement and had rallied quite a few planets to his side. It was also rumored that the Techno Union and Corporate Alliance were considering joining the Count's side due to their dislike of the Republic's laws strangling them economically. You have come a long way to my planet uninvited GD. I did not think it was your way to mask your presence and hide in the shadows, commented Dooku in his office from his chair shortly after the dark woman entered. I see your skills that the force had not dulled in the slightest Master Dooku. Or should I refer to you as Count now? Or perhaps you have a Sith name and have cast aside all that the GD have taught you? Questioned the Dark Woman after she revealed herself. Sith? No. I am not one of them. Though I sense you do not believe me. No doubt your time following Vader until he arrived here provided you with such assumptions, said Dooku while seeing the Dark. Woman was surprised her mission had been discovered by Vader so easily. So he knew I was following him, surmised the dark woman with Dooku smirking. You are good at hiding yourself from others my dear. But compared to someone like Vader, you are sadly an amateur in the field. The Sith have hidden themselves from the sight of the GD for 1000 years. They have had ample practice, replied Dooku before he motioned her to sit in the chair in front of his desk, which she reluctantly took. If only to be polite. And being his ally, he has graciously taught you this skill along with how to find those who use it, accused the Dark Woman with Dooku nodding. I cannot deny I have learned quite a few skills from Darth Vader. Nothing so nefarious as to use the dark side of the Force. Contrary to what the GD Order believes, there are some skills in the Force that do not require alignment in the light side or the dark side, said Dooku, while well, the Dark Woman couldn't deny that was indeed true. Darth Vader has been busy. I am surprised you didn't try to kill him the first day you met. It is and was your duty to the GD Order and the Force to rid the galaxy of such an evil person, said the Dark. Woman while Dooku chuckled in amusement. And what has Darth Vader done to mark himself as an evil person? 
he saved Nabu. He exposed the Yumeria's plot to invade and conquer their neighbors. I assume you saw the live broadcast of a special session of Congress with Master Sifor Daya speaking on behalf of the Kalish. No one expected a respected GD master to appear just when the Yumeri tried to make backdoor deals with certain senators in the Senate to punish the Kalish for defending their homeworld. Even more so when he brought proof of the Yumeri being the aggressors in the war, said Duku knowing Vader had called in additional ships to defend the Kali homeworld and used several holo recording devices to expose the Yumeri and their lies to the Senate. Not to mention expose a few of those illegal dealings with certain senators, and getting them thrown out of their position. Further proving the Republic was corrupt and rotting from the inside, which resulted in quite a few planets to secede from the government. At the moment, they were officially independent, and thus no longer part of the Republic. But Duku knew this action was a prelude to when the separatist movement manifested itself into its true form of the Confederacy of Independent Systems. Once this secondary galactic government was officially established, which would be in the future just a few more years away, those planet systems would join it. He sensed the dark side of the force around him. Inside of him. He must be stopped and if necessary killed, said the dark woman while Duku raised an eyebrow. And yet, this Sith Lord has done more for the galaxy in the last few years, than the Jedi Order, if not the Republic have done in decades. Tell me dark woman, how is this Sith Lord evil with the deeds he has? done? questioned Duku while the dark woman was frowning. All Sith are evil. The sooner you realize this, the better, said the dark woman while Duku sighed in disappointment at a response. We could debate this on multiple levels dark woman, but now is not the time. You have come hunting for a Sith Lord and to spy on him. Only to come up short and are currently on my planet without proper clearance, remarked Duku, while the dark woman kept on giving the Count her usual scowl. I know you are working for a Sith Lord. An enemy of the GD. He is planning something horrible. Something big. Something that will shake the very foundation of the galaxy. I did not take someone such as yourself to be a pawn of evil, said the dark woman, while Duku remained calm in the face of her insult. In another timeline, under the teachings of Darth Sidious, the Count would have lashed out for hearing such an insult. But Vader had long since taught him to ignore such things as they are done to provoke. Such a response to further prove to the insulter that they were correct. Deny the response they were hoping for and Duku could keep the conversation and the actions of those around him under his control. Plus, it was undignified of a man in his position as a Count of Sereno to lash out over such a weak insult. Vader is traveling throughout the galaxy to do what he wishes. It is his right as a person to do so despite being a Sith Lord. You on the other hand have no right to spy on him, nor arrest or kill him for being a Sith. I will ask you leave my homeworld and do not return unless I ask you to come back, said Duku, while the dark woman glared harder, but she obeyed his command reluctantly. Master Yoda would be disappointed in you, said the dark woman before she left his office. While I do respect my old master and his wisdom, I am far too old to feel any guilt in my actions, and the judgment from someone who fears change thought Duku, while helping Yoda would see the method. Behind this madness and understand it had to be done. The plan is going along smoothly. Jango Fett now has what he wants and will not be a problem to sway to our side, in providing the Republic with clones for the army. Though I did advise him not face Master. When do an open combat in the near future should the two meet, said Vader after coming out of the shadows with Duku nodding. Considering the cloners on Kamino need Jango for his genetic material to make more of the army, it would be prudent for him to keep himself alive, said Duku, while looking over the reports from Vader's travels and the contacts he made in just few short years. Not to mention keeping his head thought Vader since he recalled Jango Fett being killed by losing his head to Windu's lightsaber. With his son Boba Fett watching and resulted in the boy learning to be like his father in the bounty hunting profession. While Boba was good at it, just like Jango, it was his hatred of Jedi that drove the future bounty hunter to hunt Jedi. Vader believed if Jango were alive to nurture his son, Boba would still be a great bounty hunter. The boy needed to be properly guided by his father. From what Vader had knew of Boba's time during the Clone Wars, the young man had been raised by various bounty hunters, and all of them had a beef with the Jedi Order. This allowed the bounty hunters' hate for the Jedi to grow and fester like an unwanted infection from a wound that never healed. Vader had to make sure that didn't happen. Was your trip to Hanaga productive? Asked Tuku while the Sith Lord in front of him sat in the same chair the Dark Woman did. It was quite the visit. They tried to attack first and ask questions later. 
but I managed to convince them it was in their best interest to hear what I had to say, said Vader, who had used his powers to restrain the Nagri before asking to be speak to all the leaders of each clan together. It had taken some time and effort, but Vader explained his purpose on planet to speak to them of a terrible plague that would rain down upon them in the future, during a battle in space above their world. How the hazardous contents of the downed ship would poison the very land, the trees, the food, the water, and even the Nagri themselves. This would continue to happen until only a fraction of the actual planet was livable. As such, Vader had brought a cure, an actual cure this time around, for the planet, and the Nagri people living on the planet. The cure was dispersed via gas containers to be sent high into the atmosphere while the Nagri themselves were given injections despite the reluctance they showed at first glance. Still, the threat of an impending war being waged above them, and the plague that would render their planet a near lifeless husk was not the kind of thing one could ignore. Even if the event didn't occur this time, Vader felt this was his chance to gain their loyalty ahead of time, and with more numbers in their populace in this timeline to make things far more effective for future events. The Dark Woman will no doubt have the GD Council investigate, given how you went down to the planet personally, said Dooku with Vader smirking behind his mask. They can try, but anyone sent will most likely be killed by the Nagri. They're hunters through and through with skills, few even among the GD could match. Not to mention the fanatical loyalty I have obtained for helping them with a certain FW and that may or may not yet come to pass, said Vader with Duku nodding. Indeed. How's the issue with Death Watch coming? Asked Duku knowing the faction of Mandalorians could be an issue during the Clone Wars if left unchecked. They went well for the most part. The full pre still believes Duchess Satine has to be killed either before or after the planet is taken over by Death Watch. I told him in our anchor to transmission that such an act would make the woman a martyr to all her supporters to form a resistance movement. One that would weaken Mandalore's growth even further. Something that should be avoided at all costs. When the entire planet is under Death Watch's control, said Vader with the tone of his voice, revealing he didn't like the governor of Concordia. The term full to describe the governor is an understatement. I question whether or not the man is capable of leading Mandalorians once the planet has been taken. He might have to be removed before. The governmental transition is fully completed, commented Dooku, while Vader nodded in agreement. I have already considered this. The man sick within Death Watch is Bo Caden. She is the sister of Duchess Satine Chris. When the time comes, we can have Previsla taken out before placing Bo Caden in his place to properly lead Mandalore and prepare them for the future, said Vader. While he needed the Mandalorians to be a warrior race again, so when the far outsiders did come, they would be well armed trained, and ready for the war that was to come. The only reason he didn't visit the Chiss Ascendancy was due to the fact that GD Order were increasing their overall monitoring of his activities, and by default so was Sidious. The last thing Vader needed was for his former master to learn of Thrawn's existence or the Chiss Ascendancy as a whole, and try to add them into the Clone Wars. We can use this. If and when Mandalore is taken over by Death Watch, the Confederacy will back the change in government when Bo Caden takes over. We can spin how she is a natural born leader, not unlike her sister. However, we will also state Bo Caden wishes to stay true to her proud Mandalorian heritage. Though we will have to make it seem like her predecessor did not die from foul play in order to keep any suspicions, accusations, and doubts from possibly splintering the Death Watch faction, commented Dooku, while knowing Pre Vizsla's eventual death would have to look, feel, and ultimately be believed to be natural. Anything else was unacceptable. Poison comes to mind. Something that looks natural, yet is untraceable. The trick will be getting it into his system in such a way that the poison doesn't arouse suspicion when his body is being examined. Said Vader, but knew a properly trained and disciplined Nagri could get the job done if given the task. I trust you will look into it personally, said Dooku with Vader nodding. I already started before I even arrived on planet, said Vader, while well, Dooku didn't look at all surprised the Sith was already planning for such a thing. Vader was his secret general in all of this. Sidious was no doubt moving his own pieces within the Republic to stir the Senate for the eventual war, and was well aware of Master Sifo Dia's actions in commissioning the clone army for the Republic. When the time was right, all Sidious had to do was cause an event capable of getting Kamino right in the crosshairs of the Republic, and the GD Order as a whole. It wouldn't take much for the Republic to quickly take control of the clone army, since it was officially commissioned by the GD Order under GD Master Sifo Dias, to be used by the Republic. 
Even if the GD Council did deny it was not authorized by them, it would only make them look foolish and incompetent and not keeping one of their own in line. They would have to falsely admit to the clone. Army's secret commission and say it was made in order to stop the growing threat they sense from the Separatists. GD Temple. Very good Anakin. Your skills with the lightsaber are progressing nicely, praise quite gone while seeing his student using Form 2 lightsaber style. Thank you master. I have been putting in extra hours into my training to further improve myself, said Anakin before he quickly moved from Form 2 to Form V lightsaber style in an instant. And it shows. I am very proud of you. Not many students dedicate themselves as hard as I have seen with you, said Qui Gon, while Anakin clearly appreciated his praise and the smile on the boy's face. Showed as much. You will give him a swelled head master, commented Obi-Wan after walking into the room to see the two in it. On the contrary Obi-Wan, anyone who pushes themselves like Anakin does, should be praised for their efforts. Anyone can do the required training regimen set for us, but to give more than required. Deserves the extra praise, said Qui-Gon, while seeing his former student scowl slightly and glance over at the now tired Anakin wiping sweat from his forehead. It will lead to arrogance master. He should be kept humbled, said Obi-Wan with Qui-Gon scowling now. And by humbled, you are referring to negative reinforcement that his efforts are never good enough. Even when they are. Questioned Qui-Gon with Obi-Wan wincing at the silent accusation. He is dangerous master. The entire GD council senses it. Why don't you? Questioned Obi-Wan in a whispered tone, while Qui-Gon struggled to keep his patience with how his former Padawan acted over the issue of his current one. We have been over this before Obi-Wan. Anakin's future is uncertain. The Force wishes it to be so. That does not make him dangerous until you set things in motion that could make him dangerous. I am. Guiding Anakin in a way he should be guided given his past and ensuring any such arrogance doesn't take root within him, said Qui-Gon, since he had this argument with many GD masters about how to train. The boy. Some said the boy needed to constantly be kept down or his potential suppressed until he was in an older age group where it could be allowed to flourish without question. Some of the hardliners within GD. Order had even said the boy was too dangerous to be a GD at all, given his past, along with the Sith threat looming over them, and petitioned to cut the boy off from the force entirely. Qui-Gon had been very furious with those individuals who had made such a petition. Though he was surprised and pleased when the entire GD council agreed with him over the petitioners. Cutting someone off from the force was barely ever done in the history of the GD order, and only to the worst offenders of the GD order itself. To do such a thing to an innocent boy, his only crime here was being born was not only wrong, it went against the GD order as a whole. Qui-Gon was just glad those hardliners were shut down in their petition, before any of them could gain any kind of support within the GD order. Anyone else would say you were coddling him, countered Obi-Wan, while knowing full well that Qui-Gon had taken Anakin to Naboo to visit the boy's mother just last month. And I could say I was the same way with you Obi-Wan. In fact, had I not requested you become my student when I did, you would have been sent to the GD Agricorps. Not only that, but I have given you considerable leeway during our time together, did I not? Said Qui-Gon with Obi-Wan trying to sputter up some kind of defense. And coming up short. It was true that Obi-Wan had nearly been sent to the GD Agricorps. And it was only due to Qui-Gon choosing him at the last possible moment, did the now GD Knight not spend his days attending to the crops on some distant world. And yes, it was true that Qui-Gon did give him leeway when any other GD master would have scolded the Padawan for his actions. But to see the same leeway, if not more of it, being given to his former master's newest Padawan, who became one faster than Obi-Wan himself, made the man feel jealous for some reason. It wasn't the GD way to feel jealousy over the issue, but Obi-Wan could not help it. The boy was reckless, dangerous, and unpredictable at the worst of times. Many GD masters felt the boy should have been denied entrance into the GD order despite the fact several GD in the past who were older had become GD. Obi-Wan did not deny the rules were a woven tapestry of hypocrisy at times, but there was clearly a reason behind it, and the GD knight was not one to question the rules made by the GD council since they were working. Just don't give him too much leeway master. He might get you killed, said Obi-Wan before walking away from the two. Master, you don't believe I would do that, right? Asked Anakin while afraid the GD master would listen to his old Padawan's words and keep him at arm's length. No Anakin. Contrary to Obi-Wan's own misplaced worries, I have no such fear. Do you know why? 
asked Qui-Gon with Anakin shaking his head no. No, answered Anakin. It's because I believe in you. I see greatness in you. Now before you think that makes you all-powerful or completely invincible, it doesn't. I see you becoming a great GD so long as you put in the effort. Do. Not be arrogant with your powers and abilities. Many GD far more wiser and powerful than myself have fallen in battle because they were arrogant. They believe nothing could hurt them. But there are. Things in this galaxy that can hurt us. That can kill us, said Qui-Gon while kneeling so he was the child's eye level. Like the Sith. Asked Anakin with Qui-Gon nodding. Yes. And other things. Things just as old if not older than the Sith. It is why we train and hone our skills. Both with the lightsaber and the force. I want to see you reach your full potential Anakin. So long as. I am alive, I will do everything in my power to see that you do. However, I do not want you to think just because you have all this power, it makes you, or should make you into some kind of god. It doesn't. Said Qui-Gon with Anakin nodding. I understand master, said Anakin with Qui-Gon smiling at his student. I know you do. Come along, I think it's time I help you learn some of the languages I picked up during my travels throughout the galaxy. There may come a time when you need a protocol droid, but there isn't one around, replied Qui-Gon knowing the boy was making great progress in the physical aspects of his training. It was time to focus on the mental. Supreme Chancellor's Office. Sidious scowled at the latest report from one of his agents off-planet. Kelly had not fallen in an attack by the Umeria like Sidious had hoped. The Sith had long since provided the insect-based species with the means to expand out of their own territory in the hopes they would target Kaylee. Which they did. But that was only part of the plan. The next part was for the Kalish to repel the Umeri and take the fight to their world. As a result of this counter-attack, the Umeri would go to the Senate and plead for help. Sidious himself had already planned for the Senate to side instantly with the Umeri in order to make the Kalish hate the Republic. When the Clone Wars started, Sidious planned for Kaylee to side against the Republic and acquire a few promising members of their species to be his generals. Once his puppets obeying his command under his Sith persona were ready, they along with other systems, would break away from the Republic. He had planned to use San Hill to arrange a meeting with the Techno Union and Corporate Alliance. All in order to make an army of new and improved battle droids that would be far superior to the old ones the Trade Federation once employed. Once these new battle droids were ready for being mass produced, they would be able to fight on near equal terms with the clone army that the Republic would soon have a little over half a decade from now. That was the plan. Now, his hopes of such a thing were lost. It seemed his initial plan following Maul's demise to recruit Count Dooku to the Sith Order had failed. Worse, the man was doing what Sidious wanted him to do, but without Sidious holding the leash to keep the man's actions in check. He had tried many times to contact Dooku on Sereno both as Sidious and Palpatine, with no success for either. Persona. It was becoming annoying. Worse, the Geonosians were falling into line with Dooku's way of ignoring the Sith Lord as well. Sidious had tried to contact them to commission their help in making his ultimate creation that was the Death Star. But the damn insects wanted nothing to do with him as Darth Sidious. He wouldn't be surprised if his Chancellor Palpatine persona was equally given a cold shoulder should an attempt at contacting them were made. Again, Sidious blamed Dooku for this. He had hoped Hoggle the Lesser would want to make such a wonderful weapon such as the Death Star. Such a technological entity would no doubt appeal to the Geonosians and their industrious ways. But for some odd reason, the Archduke refused to speak to him in any sense of the word and wouldn't give a reason as to why. It seemed all his key players for his future separatist faction all knew something about him that made those fools stay far away from his presence. Why they didn't know that Palpatine and Sidious were one. And the same, it was clear they were told to stay clear of both. As if someone had told them something Sidious didn't want them to know, and it was making his future pawns refuse to do business with him. It was slowly becoming infuriating. The only good news was the clones were coming along nicely. Admittedly, Jango Fett was the ideal choice for the clone template for the army. It was actually ironic in a way since the Mandalorians had long since wished for one final crusade against the galaxy. With the Duchess of Mandalore installing a pacifist-based policy, the chance of them launching their own campaign from the home planet was impossible. He would have to provoke the rogue faction Death Watch to take the planet back and get them to being a warrior-like race again. But that was far into the future, and only if Sidious needed them to be that. 
way in order to cause further problems for the GD. Curse you Plagueis. Curse you and the Force for bringing this new Sith into the galaxy to destroy me. I will make you pay for this one way or another. You, the GD, Vader, and the Force itself will pay for. Defying me. Thought Sidious with his rage barely being kept in check. Elsewhere in the galaxy four months later. He lay broken. Beaten. Never had someone bested him like this. Not in over 2000 years of his life. Neither GD, Mandalorian, nor Sith had ever beaten him so badly. He gurgled in pain behind his armored face and struggled to get up, but found his enemy had used his damn power to pin him to the ground. Every time he tried to rise, his enemy would push him back down even harder, and do it multiple times. Per attempts so his body went deeper into the ground. Fitting, isn't a dirge. That you should fall by my hands. A Sith Lord's hands. You are a threat to the galaxy. Sadly, the GD wouldn't kill you. Only imprison you until one day came where you successful. Escaped and killed again. A mistake on their part of course, but GD do tend to make that a habit, after believing no one can destroy their order after 1000 years. Don't you agree? Mock Vader while. Dirge threw several curses at him in his native tongue. You will pay for this Sith. I will not and cannot die. Nothing can kill me. Not even your precious force, countered Dirge with Vader chuckled. Perhaps the powers the force gives Sith and GD cannot kill you. Stop you. Yes. Detain you. Yes. Hurt you. Definitely yes. But kill you. No. Not without a great deal of proper, what is the word I should use? Experimentation. Trial and error really. Unfortunately for you Dirge, I already know how to kill you. Funny how using the most simplest of force powers when put together can make killing someone such as. You so easily, said Vader before he used the force to compress Dirge's boneless body into ball that was kept in place through the bounty hunter's own armor. Stop. What are you doing? You can't do this. Stop. I am Dirge. I am the greatest bounty hunter the galaxy has seen for the last 2000 years. I have killed GD, Sith, and countless other species. I will not. Be bested by the likes of you. Bellowed Dirge before he was utterly silenced within his own armor now turned into a metal orb, and a bounty hunter now trapped in it. But by Dirge, commented Vader before put the orb in a disabled escape pod, before he crushed it into a ball over the one that held Dirge, and used the force to send it into space toward the nearby star. Of the system. With his task complete, Vader went toward his own shuttle when his calming beeped, and he answered it. Vader here, said Vader while seeing it was Master Cypher Dias. Lord Vader, I think we have a problem, said Cypher Dias with a hint of worry in his voice. Explain, commanded Vader, knowing if what the GD Master was contacting him now, it was a problem. I went to Dathomir with Kentucky Nera and Ventress like you asked in order to speak to the Night Sisters and Mother Talzin. But when we got there, it was met with open hostility. We only survive because. Ventress is apparently Mother Talzin's daughter, said Sifo Dias while Vader knew this, which was why he had Ventress go with the two GD to speak to the woman. That doesn't explain the problem, said Vader with Sifo Dias sighing over the comlink for a second. From what Mother Talzin explained, after thanking Kentucky Narek for raising Ventress in her absence, a certain Sith Lord paid Dathomir a visit about a month ago. He wasn't exactly there to play nice. He attacked. Several of the Night Sister clans for information related to a certain Zabrak you killed on Nabu, explained Sifo to Ayas, while Vader narrowed his eyes. Let me guess, Sidious wants another so-called apprentice to train. No doubt for the war he intends to start and use against the Jedi. Maybe even against Duku in order to take control of the Separatist. Someone with Maul's animalistic potential, yet will obey the commands of his master when given orders. Like a good pet, commented Vader while sensing Sifo Dias was nodding in agreement. My thoughts exactly. Apparently, Maul had had family. Brothers. Two of them. From what we learned through our investigation on the issue, Sidious found them. He killed the youngest named Feral and took. The older of the two. The Zabrak taken goes by the name of Savage Opress. Sidious had convinced Mother Talzin to use her force magic on him to bring about his full physical potential, so the Sith training he. Endured would be harsher than Maul's, but make Savage stronger at the same time, said Sifo Dias, while Vader let out a noise of annoyance. Stronger than Maul, but weaker than Sidious. That brings back memories thought Vader knowing what it was like to be the second most powerful force user in the galaxy while serving the future Emperor. Of the Galactic Empire. 
Only after the process was completed did a knight sister from one of the clans came in and told Mother Talzin what Sidious had done to obtain Savage. A fight broke out and the Sith escaped with his prize. Said Sifo Dias with Vader scowling. Contact Dooku. Tell him to up his training. Well I have no doubt his lightsaber skills are still sharp, Savage Opress is going to come at him with sheer brute strength. Sidious wants his new pet to take control of the Separatists' movement and the droid army when the time comes. I have no doubt Sidious will send Savage after Dooku in a few years' time when enough training has been done, said Vader. While knowing Sidious would take the next few years to train Savage to use his newfound strength against the ever-increasingly aging Count to overpower him. Vader knew this because it was how he bested Dooku using his youth and power to best the skilled former GD master in his timeline. Overwhelming strength and power. I will contact Count Dooku right away. In the meantime, Mother Talzin wishes to form an alliance with us. In return for the promise that we kill Sidious for his actions against her and the Night Sisters, said. Sifo dies with Vader nodding. Consider it done. Sidious is going to die by the end of the impending war. I guarantee it, said Vader firmly, and knew the Night Sisters of Dathomir could be a crucial ally in the distant future against far more. Powerful enemies. GD Temple GD Council Chambers. So the Sith Lord knew you were following him. Which means Vader doesn't truly really fear us knowing what planets he has been visiting. Or he is making us follow him knowing it would waste our resources. Surmised Master Windu with a frown on his face while he stared at the Dark Woman. And he has been teaching some aspects of his skills to others if Dooku detecting her is any indication, said Master Koth, while many nodded. What interests me is the planet Honegar. You said he went there with a fleet of formerly owned Trade Federation ships. Asked Master Mundi with the Dark Woman nodding. His personal ship left the science vessel from what my ship's cans detected of the fleet the Sith Lord had with him. I shudder to think what vile creations he had created on board it, said the Dark Woman. While she firmly believed that the science vessel among Vader's fleet was a floating bioweapons lab. Since it was manned by droids, the risk of a plague getting out and taking over the ship before killing the crew was non-existent. Unless we provide hard evidence of this, the Senate along with the Supreme Chancellor will be unable to act against him. Not to mention the fleet you say is in his possession will protect him until a paramilitary fleet can be put together to combat it, said Mundi, while leaving out how the Sith had time to no doubt modify or upgrade the fleet he now possessed. What is concerning is so many have flocked to his side. First Aku Kentucky Narek, the man's apprentice, and Master Cypher dies. His presence in the Senate regarding the issue with the Kali and Yumiri was clearly arranged by Vader to prevent the Senate from siding against the Kali said Master Poof with many nodding. Not that we could prove it. Still, only Vader would try something to get the Senate to side with the Kali over the Yumiri. From what I sensed in the Senate that day, they were planning to side with the Yumiri completely with almost no hesitation, if not for Master Daya's interference, said Eth Koth, while recalling his time with Master Yoda in the Senate, and seeing the deliberations. How they had sensed the Senate's intentions from the start. Hearing how they planned to deal with the issue with the Yumiri and the Kali with the Yumiri, claiming they were being ruthlessly slaughtered. By the thousands. How they had done nothing to deserve such suffering at the hands of their warring neighbors. It had made Eeth Koth look away in disgust, while Master Yoda looked on with a frown on his. Ancient face. Only for Master Sifo Dias to show up with a female Kali warrior in a senatorial hover chair, that once belonged to the Trade Federation. Imagine everyone surprised by the GD Master's sudden appearance with the Kali warrior and how they claimed the Yumiri were lying to the Senate. At first, the Yumiri denied they were lying, which Eeth Koth sensed the insect representative was doing the entire time. But Sifo Dias turned their lies against them easily, and explained how the Kali couldn't have invaded the Yumiri first like they were being accused of doing. For one, Vader had kept them from doing so. When such advanced ships had been captured for use, the Sith Lord had explained to the Warlords of Kaili that the Yumiri, or the Hak as they were called, had powerful friends in the Galactic Republic. They would go to the Senate to obtain additional support while portraying the Kaili as violent barbarians, and should be brought to heel under Republic thumb. Well the Kaili wanted to do things their way. In terms of destroying their vile enemy, Vader told them there were other ways to punish the Yumiri for their vile actions. Which was why he had GD Master Sifo Dias go with Rondero Lich Kummer to Coruscant to bring the Kaili's side of the story to the Senate. It wasn't hard since all Master Sifo Dias had to do was explain the. To the Senate the Kaili were defending their world from the invading insect species. 
The Genie Master explained how the Kaili race didn't have the necessary space flight technology the Yumeri did. The only way the Kaili could get off world during the fighting was if they captured invading Yumeri ships. To further prove the Yumeri were lying, Sifo Dias had shown a recording of Yumeri ships landing and soldiers attacking the Kaili. Eathcoth was almost wishing the Yumeri representative could show facial humanoid expressions when the footage revealing the sheer number of lies the insect race had been feeding the Senate. In the end, the Senate had done a complete turnaround. Where they were about to bring the hammer down on the Kaili people, it was now being done to the Yumeri instead. The demanded sanctions and reparations be made upon them would cripple the insect species for years, thinning the population and bringing them to ruin. Something which had pleased Rondero Lichcomer greatly while glaring daggers at the Yumeri representative. Master Koth also wondered who Akaiman Jai Shul was that the female Kaili warrior mentioned in passing and if this person was another ally of the Sith. He still remember how Master Dias had approached them after it was all over. Flashback Republic Senate Building. Master Yoda. Master Koth, said Sifo Dias politely. Master Dias, good to see you it is, said Yoda with a gentle smile. I concur. We have missed you my friend, said Eth Koth while Dias smiled, but it did not truly meet his eyes. I wish the feeling were mutual and genuine among the entire order, said Sifo Dias, and saw both masters frown. Surely you don't resent us? Questioned Eth Koth while Sifo Dias shook his head. You? No Master Koth. I hold no ill will toward you or Master Yoda. I just wish that, said Master Dias before sighing. That we listened to your warnings, we did. Questioned Yoda with Master Dias nodding in his head. I gave ample warning Master Yoda. I saw it. The darkness consuming everything it touched. Like a mixture of a black hole sucking in the light and a plague spreading to destroy everything else down to nothing. What did the GD Council do? They kicked me off the council, said Master Dias with Yoda made a noise. So why side with Vader? Isn't he the darkness your vision showed? If not part of it? Asked Eth Koth while Sifo Dias shook his head no. No. I admit, at first, I thought he was the darkness my vision. But after meeting with him, talking with him, and seeing beyond the norm the other Sith is the one I saw in my vision, answered Sifo Dias, while Yoda looked at him with those sagely, yet piercing eyes. Ally with one Sith to end another, you do, commented Yoda while the GD master in front of him shrugged. What would you have me do Master Yoda? Sit in the GD temple, on one of the Kashi sofa chairs. Twiddling my thumbs while the darkness spreads. Let people suffer. Let people die. Let corruption spread. Rampant and do nothing. Let the evil the GD Order has sworn to fight get so strong that in a few years time, it will have the power to crush us now. I will not be silent. I will not be idle. I will not sit. Somewhere doing nothing when my skills are better used elsewhere in the galaxy. I tried to warn you and the other GD Masters in the Council that day. To raise an army needed to defend the light. Defend. The Republic. Or at least the principles that once made the Republic so great before the very corruption in the Senate now possesses within, has nearly crippled it, said Sifo Dias, while Yoda's ears drooped. And another noise he made. You risk your very life when around Darth Vader. Can't you see that? His darkness will spread like a disease, and eventually infect you and anyone else that gets too close to him over time, said Eth Koth. While Sifo Dias shook his head. I knew what I was getting into when I sided with Vader. At least he is doing something about the injustice throughout the galaxy. Meanwhile, the rest of the GD Order sits in its comfy temple and ignoring the plights of others. Honestly Master Yoda, when was the last time the GD Order actually did something outside of the command of the Senate? Said Master Dias with Yoda being unusually silent on the matter. You know how things are Master Dias. The Rusin formation was designed to have us relinquish the power we held, in order to prevent it from corrupting us, said Eth Koth, while the GD in front of him shook his head. And instead of corrupting us, it has slowly corrupted the Senate. With the hidden Sith Lord at the heart of it, you can continue to be the puppets of the Senate and the Sith by extension Master Koth. I will not. A time will come where lines will be drawn and sides will be chosen. When that happens, you better hope the side you are on is the right one, said Master Dias before walking away from the two. Sat in GD Masters with Rondero Lich Kummer right beside him. Master Yoda. Questioned Eth Koth while seeing the aged GD Master next to him seem to age further. Failed Master Dias, we have. Not wrong in some of his accusations, he is. Fear change, we do. Fear what we no longer understand, the GD now do. 
Must relearn what we have unlearned, said Master Yoda. While walking away. How? Asked Eat Koth while Master Yoda smiled slightly at him. Visit the archives we will. Relearn what we already know and add to our knowledge of what we know now, it will, answered Master Yoda, before walking off in the direction of the GD Temple. And flashback. Master Koth still remembered how some members of the GD Council were completely against Master Yoda's decision to open up the archives, to review what they had on the Sith of old. Some of them had. Felt that if it wasn't already dangerous, it was pointless due to the information being 1000 years outdated. With the way things were going, he felt the GD would soon be overwhelmed by the war Cypher dies. Had hinted was coming with the darkness. From what he was seeing with the GD order splintering in such a way made him rethink Master Dia's words and the warning behind them. The GD order was not what it once was when compared to 1000. Years ago or farther back to the days of say Darth Revan. The teeth the GD once had in previous years had dulled, rotted, and fallen out with many of the GD seeking to use words over weapons. In fact. Koth had seen the number of Guardian class GD were on the dangerously low side, while the Consular class GD were unusually high. The only one close to being average in terms of numbers among their own class were the GD Sentinel class, but it was still on the low side. When addressing this before the GD Council, he found himself sensing the other GD Consulars on the GD Council were unhappy with him mentioning it. He explained how the number of Guardians were lower over their other two counterparts, and numbers in each class needed to be more evenly balanced. The various GD Consulars argued against this since they felt their purpose was needed in trying to probe the veil of the dark side and seeing the future now more than ever despite the fact they couldn't see things clearly at all. They even went as far as to actually call Guardian class GD to be warlike and at times hungering for battle despite the history of Guardian class saying otherwise. Eat had countered saying that while well, diplomacy was all well and good, not everyone listens to it, and with the growing separatists movement coming, the need for guardians should be growing if there was a war. The debate raged back and forth between the two sides, until Master Yoda stepped in and put his tiny, yet no less intimidating foot down, stick included, before saying the matter would be looked into by him. But that wasn't what concerned Koth. What concerned him was how he sensed the uneasiness within the other consular class GD among their group, and wondered why they were feeling that way. Shaking such thoughts away on the matter, GD Master Koth decided to focus on their intelligence network, trying to monitor Darth Vader's movements. Planet Zegeria sometime later. Is the army ready? Asked Vader to the battle droid behind him while staring out at the planet in front of him. Yes Lord Vader. All troops are assembled and awaiting your orders, said the nasally challenged voice of the battle droid that was once operated by the Trade Federation. Only they had been given upgrades, to an extent, in order to make them more useful. It had taken a lot of time, effort, and determination. But the end result were battle droids that wouldn't follow the slightest hit with the poorest AI program imaginable. Now he had a competent fighting force of battle droids. Or at least until the Techno Union created the new more improved battle droids Deku had. Commissioned them to make in secret for the impending, yet unknown to many, war. Good. Make sure all the slaves on the planet are left unharmed. Anyone owning a slave, selling a slave in the market, or anyone holding a means to control a slave, is to be shot dead, said Vader coldly while. The droid commander nodded. Roger. Roger. Exclaimed the battle droid before it set out to obey the command. While his droid army set out to do what he ordered, Vader himself looked at the planet below with narrowed angry eyes filled with hate. How he loathed this planet. Almost as much as Tatooine and that was. Saying something. This planet was the heart of a slavery empire at one point before the GD crushed it. Only now, after so many years more, and using slaves to do it. Vader hated slavery. So did Anakin Skywalker. It was one of the few things both had in common together. For Anakin, it reminded him of his life as a slave, and how said life's value was considered worthless. To Vader, it reminded him of his enslavement to his former master, and how he was too weak to break such chains that bound him to Sidious. He would have to change that. This planet should have been free of slaves after the GD came here. They should have killed every single slave supporter or hunted them down until there were no pro-slavery people on the planet. Instead, the enslaving of others was allowed to continue again. Even more so during the Clone Wars with the GD Order's own ranks having been spread so thin at the time. But not this time. Not on Vader's watch. This was a planet that would be ruled by soon-to-be former slaves. 
Vader would march on this planet, kill every enslaver, every slave owner, and anyone related to them. He would burn down this budding slave empire and turn it into something grand. Something where those who were slaves were no longer slaves. Those who had no hope, no life, and felt no form of freedom to choose now having all three on. The world to call their own. The time of slavery was now over. A new age of freedom was about to begin. And it was Darth Vader himself who would spearhead it. Turning around, he headed for his ship to personally land on the planet, in order to handle this planet himself. Memories of his former apprentice Ahsoka Tino being treated as one of these slaves burning in. His mind and the queen of the slave promoting filth believing her methods if used on GD would enslave them. Bend them. Mold them to her whims and wishes. Bah. Foolish woman. Right now, said woman. Was no doubt still a girl, not a woman for a little less than a decade from now, and was no doubt a princess among her people. Darth Vader would make sure she didn't live long enough to reach the position of queen. Coarse and weeks later. Like the rest of the galaxy, word had reached them of Sigeria's foe. How Darth Vader himself led to the sacking of each city on the planet. One by one, they fell by his superior numbers, tactics, and overall. Command of his battle droids that at one point were used by the Trade Federation. From what reports they could obtain and the Holo New Network was able to obtain and report, the Sith Lord had attacked. Without mercy. Every slaver, buyer, and owner of slaves on the planet were rounded up before being killed. The order given by the Sith Lord himself and the battle droids carrying it out to the letter. As to the slaves themselves, each one had been freed. The tracking chips they possessed in their bodies were found, deactivated, and removed one by one much to their relief. At the same time, Vader had become temporary ruler of the planet until a proper government was established. One where there was a central figure leading it, but one that listened to the will of the people, and had laws that kept the very notion of slavery from sprouting up within the planet. All in all, it left many divided on the subject. Many felt what Vader took measures into his own hands, and shouldn't have acted so rashly. Some felt it should have been done sooner. Especially with the world. Such as Egeria where its history was written with the blood, sweat, and tears of slaves. When word reached the rest of the galaxy of the planet being invaded, hollow net reporters who were well versed in. Traveling to harsh places for a story swarmed Egeria like moths to a flame. Many were expecting war-torn cities, all destroyed by the fighting, and the people struggling to rebuild itself. Imagine the surprise of the reporter, the GD, and the Republic at large when they saw none of that was the case. Construction droids were deployed in every city. Rebuilding what was destroyed during the battles that occurred and the people, all former slaves, were living quite nicely under Vader's temporary rule. There was no food shortages. No diseases. No pain. No suffering. The battle droids used to conquer the planet weren't even out in force as one would suspect. Instead, Vader had placed slaves, who once acted as bodyguards for their now late slave masters, as part of the police force in each city. He had former slaves who were assigned to doing house chores, running the household while their former masters were away, and raising the children of slave owners place in needed governmental administrative jobs. New schools to teach these newly freed slaves were already being constructed to help them learn, and hospitals were being built to help keep the risk of diseases and injuries down. Vader even made several broadcasts to the different cities of Zegeria providing updates on the progress of making the planet strong to open trade with other planets. By this point, no one knew what to make of Darth Vader. Some called him a tyrant. A warlord seeking to place his own mark on the planet by force before seeking a reason to invade other planets. Others saw him as a savior, a beacon of hope for slaves everywhere in the galaxy. Someone who was not bound by the rules of the Republic or the GD Order itself. No. This was a man on mission. A man who was not afraid to fight against those who supported slavery and used the laws of their planet or system to get away with it. Dark Vader was proving he was a man who could not be bought. Which was proven time and time again when video of the Sith Lord being offered bribery of all kinds by some of the prisoners obtained during the invasion to let them go. The video showed Vader taking the bribe, but not letting the slaver owners, buyers, and sellers go. No. He declared their bribery that of blood money, and killed them for all to see. And here. Vader had wanted it known to everyone in the galaxy that he could not, would not, be bought by anyone, and that anyone dealing in slavery trying to buy their way out of things, would be put to death. Naturally, his actions stirred up the galaxy into a frenzy. 
Some of the people killed by his hands or his battle droids came from powerful families. Families who knew politicians in the Senate and even those among the bounty hunters that made a living in the outer rim. Some who had been to Zegeria before and enjoyed the pleasure such slaves provided them, in addition to the credits the now former government had provided them for their services. So it was no real surprise to Vader when the bounty hunters and assassins made themselves known to him and trying to collect on the price his head now held from those powerful influential families. Only for those same bounty hunters and assassins to die horrible agonizing deaths with their heads sent back to those influential families. As a result, instead of ruining Vader's reputation, it only thrived, and became even greater in terms of influence. All over the Outer Rim, pro-slave planets were facing destabilization with slave revolts being stirred up with Vader being a symbol of their rebellion. In the eyes of slaves everywhere, Darth Vader was a hero. A hero of the oppressed. A hero to the slaves. And all the while, Vader went on to denounce Republic, his corrupt Senate, and even the Jedi Order being ineffective in protecting the helpless. The Sith Lord even went so far as to call the Jedi Order the puppets of the Senate, stating they were listening to the greedy wishes of bloated bureaucrats in the Senate over the will of the Force. That they chose to let such injustice happen in the Outer Rim while hearing the cries of the oppressed, yet stay in their cozy Jedi Temple, and living their lives in total ignorance. He certainly made an impression on the galaxy and the Republic. As such, factions within the Senate demanded action be done against this possible threat the Sith Lord represented. If allowed to continue, some feared he would become his own power into the galaxy, and threaten the Republic if allowed to grow. Something Darth Sidious used to his advantage under his Supreme Chancellor Palpatine persona in appeasing the Senate's various factions. Corskin Senate Building. Senators. Senators. I ask you to remain calm. As I speak, the GD Order has been asked to investigate this issue personally. As you know, the GD Order have experienced dealing with the Sith in the past. I am confident they can deal with this one, said Palpatine while many in the Senate, the ones he had manipulated before now, were calling on him to do something about Vader. Chancellor Palpatine. I must protest the GD seeking to hunt down Lord Vader. Came the voice of Senator Goom Som from the planet Tiburon. Senator Goom Som, you do not have the floor, said Palpatine, while the senator's floating chair came closer. I must still protest. This Sith Lord has done much for the people along the Outer Rim. First he freed your home planet from the Trade Federation's illegal invasion. Second, he freed slaves on a slavery. Promoting world. Third, the people who were once slaves now have lives of free people. My people believe he should be left alone to continue his work throughout the galaxy, said Senator Goom Som while. Deciding to side with Vader due to his associates in the Techno Union, making it known that the Sith Lord has had quite an invested interest in them. They made it very clear to the Senator that he should support the Sith Lord in his various campaigns, and defend his actions. Throughout the Senate, Goom Som heard various Senators mumbling in agreement at his words, since many of them had seen the good in Vader's actions. Many had opposed slavery, as it was clear. Violation of Republic law to own, buy, or sell one in Republic space. Unfortunately, there were loopholes to those laws. Some big. Some small. One big loophole was if someone bought or owned a slave. Outside of Republic space, you could bring them with you into Republic space, and they would still be a slave. It was not illegal to own a slave so long as said slave was bought on a world that didn't belong to. The Republic. Another tiny loophole slave owners tend to exploit on the more stricter worlds within the Republic, was they didn't call slaves the word at all, but were given the title of indentured servants. Everyone knew such a title was a load of garbage, but was difficult to prove, and even more expensive to try proving it. What Darth Vader had done was help land a serious blow to such an illegal business, and on a world considered to the main hub for such things. Even still, this Sith Lord is a danger to the galaxy as a whole. From what the GD have informed me about the Sith in general, they are dangerous warmongers. They thrive on the suffering of others and this one will be no different. Just because he aided several of the Outer Rim worlds does not mean Darth Vader is a good man. He will use this to build up his forces to create an empire and use it to make the people within it fight for him on an ear fanatical level, said Bail Organa of Alderaan, with several senators agreeing with him. Surely you are not suggesting this Sith Lord will wage war with the Republic, Senator Organa? Questioned Palpatine with Senator Organa nodding. I am. 
If left unchecked, Darth Vader and those who follow him will become a threat to the Republic, said Senator Organa, while many senators shouted denials or agreements with his words. And what would you suggest we do, Senator Organa? Darth Vader's actions are outside of the jurisdiction of the Republic. He has not violated any Republic laws from what I have seen, said Ainley Team. It was the Senator from Malister. As you mentioned earlier Supreme Chancellor, the GD have already been monitoring the Sith Lord's activities. I ask that we request their services to apprehend Darth Vader for questioning regarding his actions since the invasion of Naboo and if necessary that he be arrested, said Bail Organa, while the Senate was again divided on this issue. Planet Sereno. Your actions on Sejeria made quite the impact throughout the Republic, commented Dooku, while Vader provided the Count with a report of his actions. As it should. Crushing a growing slavery hub was needed to get the Republic, if not the galaxy's attention on us. With my actions showing how ineffective the Republic and the GD Order have become, many systems will leave the Republic, and many more will join our soon-to-be Confederacy. Considering your agents have been discreetly planting the evidence of the Separatists supporting me for my actions, this will help swell our ranks further, said Vader, while Dooku nodded, since tying Vader to the Separatists would make the organization grow even faster, with all the good deeds he had done. In addition, the Techno Union, Corporate Alliance, and even the Intergalactic Banking Clan benefit from the change in Sejeria's government. Their resources on that world will make it a powerful trading hub in the Outer Rim. A diamond in the rough waiting to shine brightly when properly cleaned up, said Dooku with Vader nodding. A shining diamond that will one day be part of the Confederacy, added Vader knowing Zajaria would join simply if the Sith Lord asked them to join. Indeed. I almost want to know what else you have planned for this galaxy, said Dooku, while Vader closed his eyes for a moment. I will continue traveling throughout the galaxy while my fleet of ships stay here to not only protect you, but to make the GD think I am still here on the planet for the time being, said Vader, as he was. Going to take his personal Nubian ship deep into the mid-rim, and hunt for the one thing the Emperor never got his hands on. The Katana Fleet. Vader knew long after the Empire was forged, that finding the 200 legendary Dreadnought-class ships, would have made up for the loss of the Death Star. In fact, Vader suspected that if he obtained such a fleet himself, he could very well have been able to challenge the Emperor, and turn the entire empire against a man. Once the ship were properly upgraded with the latest technology of course. But that was another lifetime. Still, the Katana fleet was and still is a prize of warships the Sith Lord knew he had to obtain now over later. Quite a few salvage parties were currently seeking to obtain the fleet for their own personal gain. Fortunately, he had an edge on where to look for the ships, despite the fact they went into a random hyperspace jump when the crew went insane. The edge in question being the Force itself. Sidious could have used the Force to find the Katana fleet, if he wanted to find all 200 ships. If it could shield the man from the GD, help him corrupt senators, and take down some of the galaxy's best people with so little effort finding these ships should be easy by comparison. And for Vader it was easy. Even now, the Force had shown him the image of the Katana fleet floating in space somewhere in the mid-rim of the Hom sector. It wouldn't take much to take control of the fleet. Due to the slave circuitry built into it, and the flagship being the one that held it. Once Vader got on board the Katana, he would claim the entire fleet of ships for himself, before sending them to the Techno. Union to be upgraded for the war that was to come. Add in his new Kaelite born and bred generals, the new and improved battle droids he was going to unleash on the Republic, and the various allies obtained so far it was going to be one hell of a war.